Hello friends, welcome to Garden with Creekside. I am Jenny and today it is an absolutely glorious, gorgeous day here in North Carolina, middle of February and it is beautiful. We've got a bunch of odds and ends things going on today that I thought you might like to tag along and let me show you um, what is happening. So here we are on the patio. Uh, I have a little fur ball around here somewhere. There she is. She is thoroughly enjoying the sun today and this very spring-esque weather that we are having. So she has discovered the kids old basketball right here and that is one of her new favorite toys. So she's probably going to be running around behind me as I take you on a little update of things that are happening here at the house. Now if you can tell behind me, we do not have gophers. We don't have groundhogs. Well, we do have groundhogs. That's not what a groundhog is. Uh, Jerry has been doing some trenching this morning. So let me show you what is happening and why in the world we are digging up our yard. Brenna is very much enjoying her, her puppy days. She is uh, 15 or 16 weeks old. She will be four months on the 13th. So <laughs> oh, we have good days and we have uh, patience building days anyway. I digress. Sorry about that. So here we go. Um, Jerry has been trenching the line this morning because we are going to be running um, high speed fiber cable line from our house all the way over to the barn to the nursery which you can see through the woods behind us. A few years ago we had to have a dedicated fiber line brought to our house because when you produce YouTube videos and you have three kids that homeschool and have classes that they take online, you kind of need to have good internet and our internet was awful. So we went ahead and had a dedicated line brought to our house and because of that we can now run it ourselves from the house to the barn. So Jerry has a friend that is with an IT company so the guy told him, he said, you know, of course we'll hook it up and service it for you as long as you run the line because of course as we know right the labor is some of the most expensive part and since we have all the machinery and the equipment to run the lines that's what Jerry is doing. So he got the bobcat which I think you can see way back there and started trenching some. I'm not exactly sure why he stopped. I think he's over at the nursery so we will go investigate that. Um, we'll take furball with us to get a little bit of exercise and I'm sure she is going to um, be an absolutely red dog by the time this is over. <laughs> so let's mosey on over there and see if we can find him. But I know that Andrew is over there working on some tables. Anyway, a bunch of stuff going on. So let me wrangle this pup and we'll head over there. Come on. Oh, I know. Jump. Good girl. Somebody fell in the trench. <laughs> Dear heavens. Come on, B. Come on. Come on. Uh-uh. 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 Oh, Lordy. Well, I think I might know why he stopped because... <laughs> silly dog just fell in to the trench. Can you see what that is? Yep, that is tons of water. So I'm wondering if he cut a water line to the nursery because now there is a line right there. I don't know if that's a new line or an old line. So we're going to go do a little investigating. <sighs> we're going to pray that it is an old line, but I really don't think it is. I think he cut the main line of water to the greenhouse. All right, my friends. So I went over to the greenhouse and yes, Jerry, in fact, did cut the main water line to the nursery. So he has left to go to the plumbing store to get whatever supplies that he needs to fix that little mishap. I'm telling you, the man, 
The man is an expert at plumbing and electrical and all things construction, which you have to be if you are an owner of a small business and you wear very many hats. Now, Brent and I have made our way over here to the pines because right behind me where you see this lime green color, um, I have some Edgeworthia that I want to plant. Edgeworthia is a fantastic shrub. It is not new to the market. It is a quote common plant, but it is an oldie, but a very, very goodie. And I want to go ahead and get some of these in the ground because we were able to snag some this winter. Um, we have learned that in this season, you just kind of grab it when you can. We found some, we grabbed them. And so I want to incorporate it here at the nursery. So what Brent and I are going to do because they're up at the production area, I actually may drop Brenna at the house. Um, but I'm going to go grab those, bring them back, set them out, and then I'm going to tell you all about Edgeworthia, and then we're going to go ahead and get these babies in the ground and planted. All right, my friends, so I went and had a little bite to eat for lunch. Brenna took a quick little nap, so I may be regretting this later, but she's going to come with me and to plant these three Edgeworthia. <sighs> It'll be fun. It's like getting a toddler or an infant ready to get out the door. I've got my little treats hooked on my side. Oh, this is going to be fun. You get to go along for the ride with me. Um, but here in the back of the Polaris, you will see that I have some of my supplies. Of course, I have the shovel. I have a leaf rake to get the pine needles out of the way. And then I have my power planter, the auger, and the drill because, my word, Jenny's not going to dig these things by hand. I am going to use that drill it makes life an absolute dream the only thing that i need now are the shrubs and then i do need to grab a bag of biotone because i am out here at the house so we're gonna plop brenna in the polaris she's still getting used to that so i can't drive take care of the puppy and film at the same time so you just have to take my word for it uh, and then we're gonna go grab those shrubs and then the biotone and then we'll get to planting all right my friends with just a little bit of finagling no blood, sweat, or tears. Thank goodness Brenna and I were able to get all of our supplies right back here. Now, to give you a bit of a perspective of where these Edgeworthy are going to go, let me um, move the camera around just a little bit to show you so you have a perspective, right? Perspective is always good. And um, yes, I love our pup, but she is kind of out of her mind right now. So she is happy chewing on a stick, and she is... <laughs> leash to a tree <laughs> she started digging in the plants and trying to eat the edgeworthy and i was like mm, no so she's going to hang out there and be my supervisor and uh make the stick pile go down a little bit make it be a little bit smaller <laughs> god love her she's going to sleep good tonight all right so when you come across and you're in the pines right here is the infamous refrigerator turned planter we're going to put the edge worthy right around on the back side. Um, I have two of them placed out. One is still right there beside of the land and sea. Now let's talk about what is edge worthy and why am I planting them? So edge worthy is also known as a paper bush plant and it is native to the Orient. I want to say China and it gives you great winter interest because it will put out, start blooming in early December. Let's see if the camera will focus. Not so much. Brenna wants to eat them. So Edgeworthy is great because it does provide that winter interest. It blooms about beginning December through the winter and it has a great smell, very reminiscent of like a gardenia, just a little bit of a spicier smell. And then for the rest of the spring, summer and fall, it has beautiful foliage that kind of reminds you of rhododendrons, which is good because we have some back over here on the other side of this bird feeder. And then of course in the fall, it gives you absolutely gorgeous fall color. Now this is a non-branded plant. So that means it's not like a a plant company doesn't own the rights to it. So it is a fantastic plant. This is Edgeworthia chrysanthia. So there you go. In North Carolina, it'll get to be somewhere in that seven foot mark. So it would be a nice, good size, hardy in zones seven through nine. Um, when you look it up, it'll say average about four to six feet tall and wide. But then when I was on NC State's 
website looking at it, they actually said about seven feet. So I figured we're in North Carolina, is NC State. They may know a little bit more for us in North Carolina. So we're gonna space them about seven feet apart. And I'm gonna kinda do a little bit of a, it's not gonna be a straight line, it'll be a little bit of a swoosh a little bit, triangle-esque. Um, and it'll just bring a nice little different look to this area. It does require part shade. If it does get full sun, it can kind of bleach out your foliage a little bit, make it look not so attractive, and it likes moist, well um, enriched soil. So nice healthy soil. That's why I grabbed a bag of land and sea compost because hey, if it needs that kind of environment, then the land and sea will be wonderful for it. So right here, you can tell this is the winter time, dappled sun, and then in the hot summer, once the poplar trees leaf out, it will get dappled sun. So this really should be a really nice place for it to grow and thrive. And it'll get nice and big, kind of give a nice backdrop to the, the refrigerator planter, and you'll be able to see it from all different angles. So I'm just gonna set the camera up and I'm going to um, get to planting. All right, so I've got the power planter auger drill and the auger. Um, I will have these linked in the video description. So if you're interested in this, you can go check it out. For us, it's been an absolute lifesaver. We originally bought them for our landscape jobs that we do. And then they, I quickly said, huh, hmm, this is great. Jenny wants to use this in all of her projects. It is wonderful. This is, I believe the nine inch auger. So it does perfect for three gallons and it does have that extra tip on it for our clay soil. Now, obviously I am under a bunch of trees right here. There's a pine tree right here. I mean, this is, we're under the pines. So there's gonna be roots. So I will go really nice and slow. I do have a shovel. I do have some clippers if I need to clip something. But when you're doing this, slow and steady, especially when you're around tree roots, you don't want it to pop your wrist. So. I'm just gonna get these three holes dug and then we'll meet back together. Like that we've got three holes dug um, the tree roots were not actually that bad they were just some little tiny guys um, but look at this so if I had dug this with a shovel we'll see if the camera can pick this up but if I had dug this with a shovel it would be in big clumps it would not be nearly as fluffy and aerated as it is so again, super, super simple. We're gonna grab the biotone. We're going to shake some in every little hole. We're gonna take the edge worthy out of the pots. We're gonna put them inside, bring the soil back, and then we'll top dress around the edge with the um, land and sea. I'm not gonna put any land and sea in the hole. I only top dress around it. 
I don't like to add, if I'm gonna add land and sea, I wanna amend like the whole area. Here, I'm just gonna top dress it. All that great nutrients will leach down into the root system and be just fine. Just like that, I've got three edge worthy in the ground. And by planting them in this natural pine area, putting the pine needles right back on it, looks like they've been here forever. Does not look like a new planting, which is always fantastic. Another reason why Brenna is um, restricted to the tree area over there. If any of you have pets, especially dogs, and you used any of the tones, the biotone especially, um, you know that they are attracted to that smell and heaven knows I did not need her assistance in digging the holes. So once it gets, you know, the rain comes and it waters, that smell will disappear. And just so you know, if your dog does get into it, it's harmless. Um, you can feel free to call the, you know, the different areas. But the people at Biotone, Plantone has said that it, you know, may give them a tummy ache, but it's not going to hurt them. Um, obviously, you want to keep them out of it if you possibly can. Now, uh, watering. Y'all always ask me about watering. I am not going to water these in. Why are you not going to water your plants in, Jenny? Well, first of all, we just got like two days of solid rain and that ground is very moist. It is very damp. We do have clay soil, so it retains the moisture really well. Um, there's no need to water them. The edge worthy themselves were wet because they too were outside in the rain all is well. Um, like our high temperatures are in the 50s. These are not going to dry out. Now if I were planting them in July or August, yes, obviously I would have to water them in really, really well and continue to water them multiple times a week. Planting them in February in North Carolina, uh, probably not going to water them for months for now because I'm going to let the good Lord do that for me and why well, work harder if you don't have to. I do think I'm going to go ahead, y'all have asked me a couple of times, right on the other side of the refrigerator, there are some ferns. Now is a great time to get these cleaned up. So let me show you what I'm talking about and how to do it. This is, these are the perfect kind of days when it's cool outside. You can just maybe feel a smidge of spring is in the air. Get outside, pick up sticks, rake your leaves, 
trim back some stuff if it needs to be trimmed back. Do whatever you've got to do. Just get outside. It improves your mood by like a thousand percent for sure. I know it does for me. If I don't get outside, you know, in a couple of days, it's cranky pants right here. So, <laughs> so I know my family is very happy that I'm outside. So let's talk about these ferns. Let me show you how easy it is to do this. Good grief, y'all. I forgot to hit the start button on the video. So I just was sitting there talking to a camera that was not running and I went ahead and proceeded to clean back all of the perennial ferns. So <laughs> I'm gonna show you what it looks like after it gets cleaned up and how easy it was to do it. <laughs> Bless my heart. Okay, so here's the area that has been completely cleaned up with the ferns. Looking at it, you would never know that there are four perennial ferns in here. So let me show you what I did. <sighs> Bless my heart. Okay, here we go. So under here is the fern, right? So it's right in here. And all I did was come in and like this was an old one. But you can see this has a little bit of green to it. And I just simply cut it back as far as I could go. Um, don't have to be super precise. But yeah, I mean, you're just cutting all of the foliage off of the plant. You're just cutting it back to the nubs because all of this, um, the new growth that happens in the spring is going to come up as new growth. It doesn't come off of the old growth. So just cut them back all the way down to the ground as much as you can. Put your mulch or your pine needles back around it and there you go. Now we are going to go check on Jerry because he did go to the plumbing store and got everything that he needed to fix the broken water line and he is I can't know I don't know if y'all can see but he's way he's getting ready to cross the culvert to the nursery and so we're gonna go just check on him very briefly we're not gonna ask a lot of questions just kind of see how things are going um, and then we're gonna wrap it up for the day uh, he and I have an at-home date night tonight so Jenny's gonna run to the grocery store and get something yummy for dinner for just the two of us the kids are gonna be out of the house uh, we'll have a little fur baby but after today, she's going to be tired, so she's going to be asleep in the kennel. Uh, so yeah, I have to run to the grocery store, but on the way back to the house, I am going to check on him, make sure he is good, and uh, yeah, it has been a great afternoon for me, I would say, maybe not for him, um, outside, because it's been a long time, it's been, it's been a while since I've been outside because of the weather, and oh man, it feels great. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of ready for winter to be over with and I'm ready to have some, some spring come back into our life. Jenny's getting some spring fever. So uh, yeah, let's get cleaned up and we're gonna go check on him. So Brenna and I have run into a little bit of a road block here because uh, Jerry was trenching across the culvert here. So we're just gonna sit and wait on him, let him take his time. Brenna has finally learned how to completely relax in the Polaris down here. I think you can see her. She's nice and chill, like I said. She's gonna sleep good tonight. So he is switching out his hydraulics um, because right now there's a ditch going across the road. All right, friends, so I checked on Jerry and he has declined to be on camera today, uh, which is probably a good thing uh, for all of us because bless his heart, he's been at this all day and Trenching is never any fun. It's not, even though you may have equipment, it is still a down and dirty job. Something's bound to get ripped up, which he, you know, hit the main water line. And now his main concern is going across the road right there at the culvert is we do have the power that's going up to the gate. So it's not the main, um, he's not concerned about the main power, the, the big, power right it's just the, the little power line electrical line that's going up to the gate and he doesn't want to hit that obviously so he um, has been trying to find it and it's not quite cooperating so anyway he is working we will it's almost like three o'clock in the afternoon that's about our time <laughs> where we start to wrap things up around here so he's going to finish up um, and I'm going to head to the grocery store Brennan's gonna go take a nap, and then we will reconvene later. Uh, there's always something going on around here. We are entering into an even busier season that we have been in. It's never dull around here, but we do have highs, you know, seasons that are a little higher and more involved than others, and we're getting ready to uh, make that gradual climb up to crazy town. So 
As always, we so appreciate you and thank you for all your encouragement, your support of this channel. Uh, it is just, it blesses our hearts. So thank you so much. Um, spring is around the corner. Even if you're buried in snow, hang on. I promise it is coming. It always comes. It's a great day. Y'all have a fantastic day. See you in the next video. Goodbye, my friends.